1 Corinthians chapter 12. Good to see my brother-in-law and his lovely family in the church tonight. Good to see everybody out. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse number 12 and 13. The Bible says, For as the body is one and hath many members, for all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. I want to talk to you tonight on the subject of the body of Christ. Uh, I've titled the lesson for tonight, Everyone is Important. Everyone is important. And I'll explain to you why. Let's have a word of prayer, if you would. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you again tonight, and we ask you, dear God, that you would speak to our hearts through your blessed word. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my heart and in my life through Calvary Baptist Church, through the wonderful people here, through the preaching and teaching of thy word over the years, Father. And Father, we continue to desire to have an impact in our area. So Father, we ask that you would work in our hearts, work in our lives, Father. Use us for your honor and glory. Be thou glorified through this church and use this church, Father, to help many people. There are many people uh, nowadays that are looking for answers. And Father, we know what the answer is. We know that Jesus Christ is the answer. Help us, Lord, to get that message out as best as possible. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory for what you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love symbolism in the Word of God because for simple folk like myself, uh, symbolism helps us uh, to illustrate uh, great Bible truths that otherwise might be a little more difficult or complicated to understand. But the church of Jesus Christ is likened unto a body, is likened unto a human body. Now, in the Word of God, you know, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly divide the Word of Truth. And it's very important that you do that because if you don't do that, that's where the great majority of false teachings and heresies are formed, okay? For example, those that teach heresy on uh, baptism. There are those who teach what is called baptismal regeneration, which is the belief that in order to be saved, you have to be baptized in water. And that's a great heresy. The Bible teaches nothing of the sort, okay? Uh, but the reason why some teach that is because they make the mistake of taking every time that the Bible mentions the word baptism, and uh, they, they take that to mean water baptism. And because they don't rightly divide the word of truth, they fail to recognize that there's more than one type of baptism in the word of God. So if you don't learn to rightly divide the word of truth and interpret things according to the context by which they're written in, you'll find yourself getting in a lot of spiritual trouble. So when it comes to the subject of the church of Jesus Christ, the same principle applies. Rightly divide the word of truth. Not every time that the Bible uses the word church, it's talking about the same exact thing. The, the word church, okay, uh, comes from a Greek word, which is ekklesia. And the word ekklesia simply means a called out assembly. In other words, any gathering of uh, any group of people, in a sense, is a church in the sense that it is a congregation or a body of people, a group of people that congregate on a periodic basis for a specific purpose. In its raw form, that's what a church is. And so when it comes to the church of Jesus Christ, we're referring to the body of believers who have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they periodically meet together for the purpose of worshiping God and serving Him. Now, in the Word of God, not every time that the word church is mentioned it's referring to the same exact type of church. For example, and I don't have time to go to all the verses because I must get to the point of the message for tonight. 
But if you look it up in the book of Acts chapter 7, you'll find that the nation of Israel, as they traveled through the desert after being delivered from Egypt, as they were on their way to Canaan land, that congregation of Jews were referred to in the book of Acts chapter 7 as the church in the wilderness. Okay, the nation of Israel was referred to as the church in the wilderness. Well, well, the question is, here's a question for you. Being referred to as the church in the wilderness, is that the same thing as what we have as Calvary Baptist Church? No, no. It was referred to as a church only in the sense that it was a called out assembly, which is the definition of the word, ecclesia, church. They were called out of Egypt and called unto the promised land, for the purpose of establishing itself in the land that was promised to Abraham, Abraham so that in that promised land they could meet together and worship God there, okay? So there's similarities. We can relate to that because we do a similar thing as the church of Jesus Christ. But there is a great difference between the church of Jesus Christ and the nation of Israel. That's what we studied in our adult Sunday school hour just a couple Sundays ago. We find in the Word of God that there's three groups of people, the Jew, the Gentile, and the church of, of Jesus Christ. And you must differentiate between the three when you're trying to interpret the Word of God. So that's one type of church, the church in the wilderness, which is simply just a reference to the congregation of the nation of Israel. Okay, But then you have uh, in the New Testament... You have the local church. That's what Calvary Baptist Church is. Now, you must recognize the difference between the local church and the body of Christ. The subject for tonight is going to be the body of Christ. The body of Christ is spiritual. The local church is physical. This is a physical body of believers. The, the, this is Calvary Baptist Church in Beaufort, South Carolina. And this local assembly represents the spiritual body of Christ, which is worldwide. We, there are brethren down in Paraguay, South America, in the middle of South America, that you don't know. But they're your brothers and sisters in Christ, just as much as your brother and sister in Christ that sits in the same pew that you're sitting in right now. They've been bought by the same, they've been saved by the same grace of God and washed in the same blood that washed away your sins when you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. They may have a different language, they may have a different culture, they may have a different tone of skin, but we have the same Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? We have brothers and sisters in Christ that live in Africa. I don't know anything about their culture. I don't know how to speak some, many of the different languages that they speak. But one thing we do have in common, I can go anywhere in the world. I can go to Europe. I can go to Africa. I can go to India. I can go to South America. I can go to Canada. I can go anywhere in this world. And as soon as I meet someone, that has been saved by, his, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we may have nothing in common, nothing else in common, we no, may know nothing about each other, but as soon as I sit across from that individual, just give us two or three minutes, and it'll be as if we knew each other forever. You know why? Because we're saved, we have the same God. That's wonderful. You want to fix the problems that we have in the world, all this division, all this hatred, all this strife, all this anguish and turmoil we see out in the streets? Listen, uh, the world doesn't have the answer, but we have the answer. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. When everyone falls in love with Jesus Christ, now we have something in common that brings us all together as one family. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And so I want to talk to you tonight about this subject. Everyone is important. And by way of introduction, we're, I'm presenting to you that there are different types of churches in the Word of God. You have the nation of Israel that was referred to as the church, the church in the wilderness, Acts chapter 7. You have the local church. And then you have the body of Christ, which is spiritual. And I'll demonstrate that in just one, one minute. But then in the future, you have another church. You have the glorified church or the glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Notice, without spot or wrinkle. Why? Because in this local church, we got a whole bunch of spots and wrinkles. I'm looking at a bunch of wrinkly people right now. <laughs> We've got a lot of spots. What, what does that mean? Listen, there is no perfect church. 
I'm sorry. There's no perfect local church, and I've joked about it before. But if you ever find one, please do that church a favor and don't go to it. You say, but it's perfect. Obviously, that's where I want to go. No, please don't do that because as soon as you show up, it won't be perfect anymore. There is no perfect churches. They're just, oh, listen, people have a misconception about what the church is. People, people think that the church is for uh, 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 perfect people. It's not. Uh, to the contrary, the reason why we're here is because we realize how imperfect we are. We realize how defective and how needy and how problematic we are. And we also realize that at the church, that's where they'll talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's got the answers and the solutions that I need to be a better person, a better father, a better husband, and a better Christian for the glory of God. We don't go to church because we think that we're better than everyone else. It's the opposite. We go to church because we realize how bad off we are, how much we need God, how problematic we are, how defective we are, how sinful we are. But we realize that down at the church house, there's some solutions. If it's a Bible-believing church, if it's a Bible-preaching church, we'll find the solutions that we need to help us fix the problems that we have. That's what church is for. I mean, uh, what, kind, what would you think if someone went down to the Buford Memorial Hospital and somebody went in there with a pharisaical attitude and said, what, in the, what is wrong with this place? Everybody here is sick. What kind of place is this? This is not what I expected. This is a hospital. Uh, why is everybody sick here? Well, that's a hospital. That's what it's for. If you're not sick, you don't need to go there. And guess what? Jesus Christ said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Listen, if you're a sinner, you're welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. We're not looking for perfect people, because if you're already perfect, then you don't need the church. But if you realize how low down, sorry, and rotten you are, and you realize how, how the needs that you have and the problems that you have, Come on down to the church. Look, we're all in the same boat. Let's work on it all together as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have a perfect church, but we've got a perfect God. Amen. We don't have a perfect church, but we've got a perfect Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who provided for us on the cross of Calvary a perfect sacrifice. As a matter of fact, it's so perfect that there's not a sinner on the face of the earth that if he'll put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there's not a sinner in the world that God can't save and forgive and transform. All right. Everyone is important. So there's... Four different types of churches. One day the church will be perfect, but that will take place when we meet the Lord in the air and he glorifies us with that glorified body. And then don't you worry, we'll, we'll, we'll go to heaven and we'll just have us a good, we'll have a church service like never before. Amen. All right. Everyone is important. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number, verse number 12 again. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So the church of Jesus Christ is symbolized, as a, is pictured as a human body. And all of you, all of us that are saved, we are members of this body, okay? In the body, you've got the eyes, you've got the nose, you've got the mouth. You've got the tongue, you've got hands, fingers, arms, you've got organs, you've got uh, all kinds of body parts. And every single member of the body is important. Every single one is important. Now, there are those who deny that 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is referring to a spiritual body. They say, uh, as a matter of fact, there's some that would accuse us of teaching Catholic doctrine. Because the word Catholic means universal. So they say when you guys say that the body of Christ is universal in the sense that uh, the body of Christ includes all believers, okay, this invisible spiritual body, that's Catholic doctrine. No, we're teaching Bible doctrine. We're teaching Bible doctrine, okay? Because here's the thing. If you look in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you cannot deny that it's talking about something spiritual and not physical. Again, that's the same mistake. These Baptist writers that accuse us of teaching Catholic doctrine, they make the same mistake that the Church of Christ makes 
and the Campbellites make when it comes to baptismal regeneration. Every time they see the word baptism, they think it all means the same thing. They don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth and need to do these Baptist briders. Amen. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look, let's look at the context. Look at verse number 1. Now concerning, notice, spiritual gifts. Well, let me ask you a question. Right out of the gate, in the very first verse of Scripture, is there anything spiritual there? Look at verse number 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit. Look at verse number 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same, what's the Bible say? Spirit. Uh, look at verse number 7. But the manifestation of the what? Spirit. Verse number 8. For the one is given by the, the what? The Spirit. <laughs> verse number 9. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working, verse 10, of miracles, another prophecy, another discerning of spirits. Verse 11, but all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit. How many times does the Holy Spirit have to mention the word Spirit for you to understand that he's talking about something spiritual here? So in the context, we see that when he refers to the body of Christ, very obviously, it's referring to a spiritual body. This is a local assembly. And this local assembly represents, in this part of the world, the body of Christ that includes all believers. Now, I can take you down to uh, Walterboro, South Carolina, which is just an hour and a half or so away, and I can introduce you to other churches that represent the same body of Christ that we represent right here in Beaufort, South Carolina. I can take you... To, uh, I could take you down to Paraguay. I could take you to the mountains of Hialeah, Puerto Rico, where we uh, established a church and introduce you to another church that represents the same exact body that this church represents here in Beaufort, South Carolina. And we can go all over the world and you'll find believers that worship the same God. Okay, so uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he's talking about a spiritual body. The local, the, the, the church is being uh, uh, symbolized by a human body. Now, several things I want you to notice about the body of Christ. First of all, I want you to notice the importance of unity in the body of Christ. The importance of unity in the body of Christ. If you look at verse number, look at verse number three of 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call of Jesus accursed, and that no man can say, notice, that Jesus is the what? Is the Lord, notice, but by the Holy Ghost. Again, this is the common denominator. Uh, again, I could take you down to Paraguay, South America, and introduce you to brethren that eat food that you've never tried before. And I could bring them to the United States and introduce them to some food that they've never tried before. They have totally different cultures, totally different customs. Brother Kenny Cermak is going to New Guinea. Brother Scaletti served a couple years there in uh, Papua New Guinea. And over in that part of the world, they have customs and they have food and they've got ways about them that would be totally strange to us. But one thing that we have in common, the same individual that they recognize as their Lord is the same individual that we gladly recognize as our Lord as well. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, whether it's in Mexico or Australia or South Carolina or Canada or any part of the world. All men need to be saved by the same Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So notice, we confess the same Lord. That ought to unite us. That ought to unite us. Let me tell you something, brethren. I hate schisms in the body. I'm against it. In Spanish, we call it grupismo, groupism. I'm against groupism. I don't believe in cliques. I don't believe in clans. I had a pastor one time when I was on deputation. He asked me, uh, he goes, uh, what flavor are you? What flavor am I? He goes, yeah, what flavor are you? He said, well, I... I'm a member of Calvary Baptist Church. I'm an independent fundamental Baptist. I believe the King James Bible, blah, blah, blah. He goes, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. What flavor of that are you? So finally I said, well, what do you mean by flavor? 
I've never, I've never had that question before. He said, well, are you the Ruckman flavor? Are you the Jack Howes flavor? Are you the Bob Jones flavor? Are you the this flavor? And he mentioned a dozen others. I said, I'm the Jesus flavor. That's the only flavor I, I want to be about. Jesus Christ. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. It's not about you, and it's not about me, and it's not about some Christian celebrity. We're here to glorify one individual, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that ought to bind us together. That ought to unify. That ought to be good enough. I've had fallen out with preachers that wanted me to work with them, that wanted to work with me. But they have this idea that only the elite can do certain things. I don't believe in that. I believe there's room in the body of Christ. Well, there's certainly room in the body of Christ for everyone because everyone, everyone is invited to be saved. But there's room in the body of Christ. There's room. There ought to be room in the church of Jesus Christ for everyone to serve because everybody is important in the body of Christ. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're white, black, red, or yellow, or Puerto Rican, or Mexican, or Chinese, or Japanese. Everybody is important in the body of Christ. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I don't care if you're a child, a boy, or a girl. I don't care if you've got education. I don't care if you never graduated from the first grade. There is something that you can contribute to the body of Christ because you are important in the body of Christ. I don't believe in this elitism. I don't believe in Nicolaity, the clergy and the lady. Now, I will say this. Not everybody, obviously, can be the pastor. I mean, there's a, there is a, there's, there's a balance to all this. Obviously, not everybody can serve as a deacon. Not everybody can lead the singing. Not everybody can fit in the choir. Okay? Not everyone can do the sound ministry. I don't want to do it. I don't know nothing about that. The stuff would blow up if I tried to do it. OK, everyone has what what they can contribute to the body of Christ. And you know what? I'm here to tell you every single one of you. I don't care who you are. Young people, you're important to this church. Listen, don't listen to the lies of the devil. We have so many people that are suffering from depression in our world. And you know why? One of the reasons there's many different reasons why people suffer depression. One of the reasons are is because a lot of people, they don't see their place in this world. They don't see a purpose for their life. They don't think they're important. I'm here to tell you that's a lie of the devil. You are important in the eyes of God. If you're saved by the grace of God, you are a child of the king. I've got four children, every single one of them, as different as they may be. I love every single one of them all the same. And every single one of them, I want them to be successful in life. Guess what? Your heavenly father, who's a perfect father, thinks the same exact way about you. You are important to the Lord. Young people, you're important to God. Old people, you're important to God. That's right. Uh, uh, I'll never forget Brother Troy Hardy, speaking of old people. <laughs> Remember Brother Troy Hardy? He's gone on to be with the Lord. What a blessing that man was. Served down in Mexico, uh, providing Bibles and material and helping other missionaries out. Finally, he lost his eyesight to where he wasn't able to drive and travel anymore. And that really tore him up because he really loved going down to Mexico and doing that. But they told him, you can't drive anymore. You can't see. You can't drive if you can't see. But that didn't stop him. Brother Troy still wanted to serve the Lord. He said, so you know what I'll do? He said, he, he started going down to Victory Baptist Press. That's the Bible printing press that we support. And he, he got over there and he, he, he started helping them uh, put together the booklets of John and Romans. He said, he figured, at the very least, I can do that. He said, there's, there's got to be something I can do to contribute to the body of Christ. Now, some of the pages might have been upside down or inside out, but he, he did something. <laughs> the point is, everybody is important. I don't care who you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what amount of talents you think you, you, you don't have or, or may have. Everybody in the body of Christ is important. The importance of unity in the body of Christ. Look at verse number 4. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. And there are, uh, yeah, verse 4. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 
There are diversities of operations. Okay, but it's this, notice this. It is the same God which worketh all in all concerning unity in the body of Christ. May I remind you, we all need God. Every single one of us. That's why everyone is important in the body of Christ. There is nobody here that needs God more or less. We all need God all the same. I don't care if you've been saved for 20, 30, 40 years, you still need God. Hey, listen, if anything, you may need God more now than ever before because let me tell you something, as time winds down and you get closer to the finish line, the devil is going to turn up the heat because he realizes that he, he's losing time when it comes to tripping you up. So you better get with the program. We all need God. Young, old, I don't care who you are, everyone has the same needs, my brethren. That ought to unify us. When we realize we all have the same needs. And then look at this, verse number 7. Uh, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For the one is given the Spirit, the, the word of wisdom to another, uh, the word of knowledge, notice, uh, by the same Spirit to another, faith by the same Spirit to another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another, working of miracles, another of prof uh, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, and another interpretation of tongues. Uh, I want you to notice, oh, look at verse 11. All these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Here's something else you need to rec recognize. We all minister to the same body. That's why division is so stupid. <laughs> because at the end of the day, we're all members of the same body. It makes absolutely no sense for this hand to be at war with this hand. I need both of them. We need every member of the body of Christ. And listen, let me tell you something. If you don't think every member in your body is important, then come help Brother Kenny and Brother Johnny when they're doing this construction back here and you ever uh, uh, operate a hammer and hit your thumb? I think that's one of my gifts. I, I, you ever hit your thumb when you, guess what? As small as that member of the body is, but just as soon as that thing is in pain, the whole body focuses its attention on that one tiny little member. That's pretty radical. How that tiny little member of the body can dominate the whole rest of the being. And let me tell you something. When one person is hurting, the rest of the body of Christ will hurt. Let me fall tomorrow in some kind of gross sin and just ruin my reputation and bring a reproach. Uh, listen, it'll not only be a reproach to me and my family, it'll be a reproach to the rest of the body of Christ. That's how important you are. If you go down, the whole rest of us will go down with you. The whole rest of us will be affected by it. I'm not saying the church may not continue to go on. God, will, God is very powerful and very merciful, and God can even replace you if you're not careful. The church must continue to go on, but you can greatly hinder and handicap the church. That's how important you are to the body of Christ. Uh, I want you to notice not only the importance of unity. I'm trying to hurry. But notice the importance of diversity. Now, that's a big word nowadays. Everyone, that's what everyone wants nowadays. Diversity, diversity. We need diversity. And it's so ironic that the world hates the church when really and truthfully in the church, you'll find all kinds of diversity. That's right. Listen, I'm telling you, my brethren, the answers that this world is looking for, for all the different problems that we see in society, you'll find all the answers right here. Because you can get people of all kinds of backgrounds. You can get people from the city to get along with people from the country. You can get a city boy to fellowship with a redneck, and they'll just have a good old time no matter what their backgrounds are. That's right. You know why? Because they got one thing in common. We worship the same Lord, Jesus Christ, and we both love him. Amen. And so notice diversity. Look at verse number uh, he mentioned that there in verse number four. Now, there are, notice, diversities of gifts. Look at verse number 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body. 
is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not uh, the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, <laughs> where, were the hear where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. You are important to this church. I don't know what function you perform, but every member of this body has a specific function, and I need all of it to work in order for the rest of the body to, to function properly in the way it needs to function. When everyone is not on the same page, when everyone is not working together, the body cannot function like it needs to, my brother. You need, I need both of my eyes. I need both of my hands. I need both of my feet. We need every single one of you. Every one of you can contribute. You may not have the experience that a brother or sister in Christ that has been saved for 20, 30, 40 years has, but let me tell you something. I don't care if you've only been saved for six months. You're still very important to the body of Christ. We need, we need new blood. and new, We need that freshness in the church. <laughs> That's right. You may not have the Bible education. You may not have all the answers to your questions like some other brethren might have. But I'm telling you, listen, your presence is just as needed and desired as everybody else. That's why I'm telling you, my brethren, when people come through the doors of this church, you ought to make it a habit to, to, to take, it won't take just but three or four seconds to go shake their hand and let them introduce yourself to that individual and let them know, listen, we are so happy to have you here. Amen. I want people to know that they're welcome here. I don't care who they are. I don't care what their problems are. Hey, come to Calvary Baptist Church and we'll do the best we can to love you and to help you and to be a blessing to you because we realized that there was a day in our lives when we were just a mess. As a matter of fact, we're still a mess, but God continues to have mercy in our lives. He renews his mercy every morning because great is his faithfulness and God has been so good to us that we want you to see how good he's going to be to you too. So diversity, my brethren. Diversity, the importance of diversity in the body of Christ. Not everybody can do the same thing, brethren, but everybody can do something. And whatever it is that you can do, listen, trust me, we want you to have an opportunity to put your talents and your abilities to use for the glory of God and for the good of the church. Amen? All right. And listen, uh, diversity of members fulfills the will of God for the body. Because here's the thing, my brethren, God has a purpose for this church, just like God has a purpose for every church. Brethren, listen, this is, this is coming from the heart when I'm preaching to you tonight, because I understand what it's like to have to do everything in the church. Listen, I know what it's like as a missionary to have to be the carpenter, the plumber, the electrician, the counselor, the psychologist. The, the politician, <laughs> everything. And the, and the crazy thing about it is I don't know how to do any of that stuff. But when you ain't got nobody else to do it, you got to do it. When I, when I went to Hiuya, Puerto Rico, we had nine people at the church. Five of them dropped out within the first couple months for different reasons. So it was down to four plus my family. Well, my goodness, when that's your situation, if you want anything to get done, I can't depend on the three old ladies and the one man that's barely faithful and hates my guts. <laughs> I'll never forget, we had a 15-passenger van that was just a death trap. <laughs> it was a suicidal attempt every time we drove that thing to pick people up, but it was all we had. And uh, I figured, look, if I want people to preach to, I'm going to have to go get them. So we drove that thing around that da those dangerous years. How many of y'all y'all been to Hiuya, Puerto Rico, Brother Charlie remembers? How dangerous those roads were? You look to the side. Remember, Tabby? And it's the drop of death. You fall down that way, ain't nobody ever going to find you again. And we go around them mountains and pick kids up for church and and old people up for church, and drug addicts, and thieves, and all kinds of crazy people. And I'll never forget, God started saving people. We started to finally see some fruit. Man, we worked so hard. 
And it seemed like every step forward, we were just taking three steps back. And sometimes you're just banging your head on, against the wall. Man, are we getting anywhere? We're working our, our hands to the bone, and it seems like we're just not getting anywhere. And then all of a sudden, God begins to bless, and people start getting saved. And you know the saying, when it rains, it pours? Seems like when God finally decides to bless, it just, he just, it just comes in waves. People start getting saved, but because I was so accustomed to doing everything, that once the church finally started to grow a little bit, then people, you know how people are when they get saved. Remember how you were when you got saved? You start getting fired up. Now you want to get involved. What can I do to contribute? And people started getting fired up and wanting to help out. But I was so accustomed to doing everything. And I'll never forget, one of the brethren in the church said, hey, tell the pastor, why don't he let me go and drive the van and pick everybody else up? And I wasn't even thinking about it. I'm thinking, no, no, I'm the missionary. I've got to do this. And I'll never forget Maria putting her hand on my shoulder and said, Manny, let the brother do it. You've always been complaining about needing help. Now you finally have some. And then it dawned on me, wow, I don't have to do everything all the time. There's, uh, this is what the church is for. It's not just about the missionary doing everything. Everybody in the church is important. And my brethren, let me tell you something. We, th this is a good church. When I see brethren mowing the lawn and I see brethren over here working on the bathroom and I see brethren over here uh, doing all this and the brethren working with the sound equipment and people singing in a choir and we got young people next door practicing specials and there's some ladies, uh, young ladies that are working with them. Brethren, I cannot tell you how much of a blessing it is to my heart to see brethren doing things. I love it. Because you know what? I guarantee you God is going to bless this church if we continue to do our part. Amen. All right, let's close this out. I'm done. The importance of, we see the importance of unity in the body of Christ. We, we see the importance of diversity of the body of Christ. Let me close on this, and I won't get into it because I'd rather do a whole, I'd like to set aside a whole nother time to talk about this one. But the importance of maturity in the body of Christ. And we don't have time to get into it, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about the body of Christ. And he talks about all the different members in the body and how important all those members are. And then you know what the very next chapter is? Chapter 13, what does he talk about there? Charity. He ends out 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and says, let me show you an even more excellent way. He talks about all the talents and abilities that are important. You are important. Your talents and abilities are important to this church. We need them so that we can accomplish what the purpose that God has for this church. However, you want to know what your, the very best ability you can develop is? Is to simply learn to love one another. That's the third point, and I don't have time to preach it. We'll save that for another night. The importance of maturity in the body of Christ. You know what maturity is? When we all begin to realize how much we need one another. Number one, we all need God. But number two, we need one another. I can't do everything. Like I found out there in the church in Puerto Rico, I didn't need to do everything. I couldn't do everything whether I wanted to or not. When I was in Paraguay, South America, I was having to serve as a pastor for four churches at the same time. That thing ran me to the ground. My brethren, I'm telling you you, you, you may not even realize the blessing it is to be a part of a church where everyone is trying to do something for the glory of God, where everyone is contributing. I'm telling you, God will work in a mighty way. But we're going to need maturity. And what that means is, what's going to, you know what is the bond of perfectness? You know what's going to keep all this together? Because here's what happens. You got to be careful with those talents and abilities. Again, I don't have time to get into it. But be careful with, with ego. There's no room for ego here. This is not a competition. If you sing in the choir, uh, I'm going to out-soprano sister so-and-so. <laughs> it's not about that. You're not there uh, to impress anybody. You're there to simply exalt Jesus Christ. If you decide you want to help out, you want to help cook, uh, with meals, you want to help with the sound ministry, you want to help with the music in the church, you want to help with the cleaning in the church, well, I'm going to clean the church better than the last cleaning crew so everyone can see how good I am at cleaning. It's not about that, brethren. 
This is not a competition. We're here to serve Jesus Christ. And when you love one another, guess what? You know what brotherly love is? Remember what I preached on? It is the desire for the benefit and the success of everyone else. I want to see you being a better father. If I see you having great success with your children, I would be a sorry, rotten Christian for me to be jealous of that. Boy, yeah, he may be, his kids may be doing all right, but if you knew some of the things I knew about him, man, will you learn to get over your stinking self? You ought to be happy for your brother. If you see a, a God blessing another brother and sister in Christ, man, if God blesses Brother Kenny with a brand new truck tomorrow and you're jealous about that because you're still stuck with a 2003 Chevy, <laughs> well, no wonder God's not blessing you because first he's got to deal with your stinking bad attitude and jealousy and envy before he can bless you with something nice. Maybe that's what's keeping him back from blessing you. I don't know. Brethren, maturity. We're not in competition with one another. Let's work together. And let's do something good for the glory of God. Amen? Let's all stand for a word of prayer. Thank you, brother, for your patience. All right. Well, it's not that late. Man, I should have went 20 minutes longer. Okay. Okay. All right. His name is Jeremy. Okay. All right. Anything else that we need to urgently mention tonight in, in prayer as we close in a word of prayer? Rhonda and Billy. Okay. All right. Any, anything new on them? Uh, okay. Let's keep Brother Billy and Sister Rhonda in our prayers as well. And this Jer Jer Jeremy, right? All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father... Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for what he did for us and continues to do for us on a daily basis. Lord, we thank you for the church. We thank you, Lord, for the way you worked in our lives because of the church, Father. We give you all the glory for it, Father. And we desire to see you continuing to work through this church to help us, Lord, to point others to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we have many needs. We pray for our missionaries. Brother Kevin mentioned a few tonight that have special needs. Brother Tillman, a very faithful soldier of the cross, and other missionaries that have needs. Lord, would you protect them? Would you help them as far as their health and continue to use them that many souls might be saved? We pray for Brother Wayne Fair. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, open the doors for him, the door for him to be able to get that CAT scan done and, and, and get the medical attention that he needs, Father. Help him. Put your hand of, your healing hand of grace upon that faithful servant, Lord. We pray for this individual down in Pastor Knox's church named Jeremy that is struggling with, with the coronavirus, Lord. There's so many that are struggling with that virus. We ask for your mercy upon them, Lord. We ask that you would give the doctors the wisdom that they need to be able to tend to these individuals and find solutions to help them to get through these trying times. We pray for our brother and sister in Christ, Brother Billy and Sister Rhonda. Dear, Lo Dear Lord, would you put your hand, your healing hand of grace upon them and heal them, Father, so that they can come back to church where I know they want to be, Lord, rejoicing with the rest of, of, of their family and the Lord. Bless this church, Lord. Give us, uh, help us to grow in our love for you and in our love one for another, and use us in this community for your honor and glory. And we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.